Hi guys, um, this short video is just about the footnotes in table C1. Just going to cover all the columns from table two, column two to column um, five. Anyway, the footnotes I'm just going to bring up are just ones that you see the little letters tied onto the subtitle on the load groups. Just some of the important ones you need to know about and how they work. So if you turn over the footnotes on table page 461, around 461, 462, um, I'll just go through some. They're in numbers now. They used to be in letters called A, B, C, D, but now they're actually classed as numbers. So the first one I want you to do is look at item number four, lighting track systems regarded as two points per metre of track. So if you ever do want a maximum demand that says I have six metres of lighting track, one metre will be per two points. So if you've got four metres of lighting track, obviously it's going to be eight points. All right, so it just gives you a value of what's on there. Um, the other thing is the luminaires, um, number five, says socket outlet installed more than 2.3 metres above a floor for the connection of a luminaire, maybe including as a lighting group in in low group A1. So what they're saying, if you've got an exhaust fan in a bathroom or something that's in the roof above 2.3 metres, so 2.3 metres is your standard height of into the ceiling. If you've got a socket outlet that's in the bathroom, it can be cast as a fan. So if I've got 420 watt fans, more than 2.3 meters above the floor they can be added as lighting points if they're below that lighting point um, below 2.3 meters they're classed is a gpo okay the maximum load too if you read all of that appliances rated at more than 150 watts which are permanently connected on the connection of the means of a socket outlet more than 2.3 meters above the floor may be included as a lighting point in group one so what they're saying is your big sweep fans and all that as well um, the connection is actually above 2.3 meters the fan hangs into the seal into the floor area but the connection point is where it is inside the ceiling so above 150 watts right it's classed it's classed as a gpa but if it's below 150 watts it can be classed as a lighting point all right so your big sweep fans and things like that are 75 80 watt they can be still classed as a lighting point, all right? Um, point six, if we take that into consideration, sometimes in low groups, in like when you get multiple domestic units and you know, low groups in table C2 as well, but this is on table C1 as well, you might be given a batch of lights and it just says uh, 15 incandescent lights, but it has no load on it. So point or footnote six says that the, load, the loading shall be 60 watts per light. It actually gives you a value there, okay? Yes, it doesn't mention LEDs because most of the time when you get LEDs mentioned, they'll give you a load rating on it. All right. Um, if you get a fluoro or anything, sorry, a, a chandelier or anything, um, it's only 60 watts per point. We are, or you add up what the load is on the chandelier, but it's only class as one point. Um, the other thing you got down the bottom there is um, point eight as well. Um, Point eight, now the way this reads, a lot of people get confused, but I'll read it out to you and I'll give it back to you in simple English. For the purpose of determining maximum demand, a multiple combination socket outlet is regarded as the same number of points as the number of integral socket outlets in the combination. Put it in simple words, if you've got a double power point, it's two points. If it's a triple, triple gang power point, it's three points. So if I say I've got 12 double GPOs, it's 24 points. Okay, and that adds up to when we're doing column two, all right, uh, sorry, column two, when we need number of points. The next one is um, nine, it says each, each item permanently connected on electrical equipment but not exceeding 10 amps may be included in load group B1 as an additional point. I made the point in the other video that if it exceeds 2,300 watts, it goes into the other load groups. If it's below 2,300 watts, which is 10 amps, it is counted as a GPO, okay? The next one is number 10, where electrical um, installation contains 15 or 20 amp socket outlets covered by load group B2 and B3. The base loading of each group B is increased by 10 or 15 amps respectively. If both 15 and 20 amp socket outlets are installed, the increase is 15. That was going back to what I was saying in the last video regarding that if you've got 15 amp outlets on its own, it's uh, sorry, 20 amp outlets, it's just classed as 15 amps regardless of how many. Same with B2, you only get 10 amps regardless of how many 15 amp outlets. But as soon as you mix the two together, the low group from B2 goes up to B3, all right? 
and they all become 20 amp outlets if you've got 15s and 20s mixed together. And that's what it says in simple English. All right, there's a few other footnotes there and all that, but these are the main ones that you'll come across that we need to cover in this booklet anyway, and also in the booklet of um, multiple domestic and table C2 as well. All right, the notes are little numbers that are attached under the low group, so when they read, see the end of the wording, there'll be a little number there. That's what this footnote's referring back to. All right, it's like the fine print on the document. All right, anyway, see how you go. Got any questions? Let me know. I'm happy to explain it.